times. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes, as we've mentioned in these, I would say improvised, but they're not improvised, as we share the reality of either recording or not recording or making a mistake or being just real about life and about a life with God in a devotional way, we promised that we'd mention like do-overs when I recorded a video and somehow it disappeared off the computer, meaning that it either recorded over itself or I didn't click the button or for some reason there was a glitch. So this is a do-over, but praise the Lord. God knows, and I don't think that the message ever changes, you know, when I'm doing a do-over, but God, I believe, in some way arranges it in a better way, in a presentation that he would say more so than what I may have shared in the first one, <laughs> which I have no record of. But that brings to point the matter of making mistakes, that you can't make mistakes, you can make an error, you can fail, you can sin. Not as though you want to sin, but because you live in a body that does sin. It wars against what you want to do. Because Paul said, the good that I would, I do not. That which I would not, I do. O wretched man, who can deliver me from this sinful flesh that I live in? And you have a body that has appetites, desires, wants, cares, has a lot of the things that psychologists and psychiatrists have watched from outside to see what you do by your actions and have created a science about observable means to which we can say, yes, that is true up to a point because a person will act according to certain sciences that we have about the outward manifestation of what a person is. But you see, a Christian goes beyond the outward things. There's a living person inside them that not only is different than their outward person, it is also cohabited by someone who has come inside them to change them from the inside out. And that person is Jesus Christ, and he's done so by his Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God, Jesus sent and asked the Father to send to us to live in us, to change and rearrange our inward being so that we would become a spiritual person that lives from the inside outward. So sciences are good in some ways of the human nature, which is sinful, but they don't explain the inward reality of what God is in us. And so they're only good up to a point. And so you can see that they have some facts correct, but not the truth within. We're told faith without works is dead. And in that, one of the works of faith operates in faith, meaning that faith isn't something you can see, it's something you do. It's an action and attitude that you can't see or have any other reason to believe in something, but you exercise this ability to trust in something or someone beyond what you can scientifically at the moment prove, but you can demonstrate in science by way of the results of a process that continually exercises itself in a dynamic way. Mathematically, it can be proven. Likewise, the f works of faith are some things that sometimes we forget to do when we sin. You see, Adam, when he sinned, chose rather than a work of faith and trust in God, chose his own thought process to do something he should not have. He ran away from God rather than running to God. And that's what a work of faith is because we've been given forgiveness. Forgiveness has come to us by way of Jesus dying on the cross. The law said, you shall not do these things and if you do, you shall surely die. The law said that if you want to please God, you must do these things in order to please him. The law said that you must become perfect even as your Heavenly Father is perfect. And of course, in all these things, we fail. Does that make us a failure? In all these things, we sin. Does that make us sin? Because Jesus demonstrated the acceptance of the Father's choice in dying for us, he paid the price or the consequence of our sin in separation from God so that we could go to God and then receive forgiveness for our sins, for our failings, for our inability to be perfect as our Father wants us to be. 
So the works of faith in believing what Jesus said, in believing what God said, in believing in the solution that God has provided for us, are simply going to Him in a personal relationship and asking Him to forgive us. So you see, you have forgiveness waiting for you at times that you need to go and talk to God about in order to receive the complete work of faith that can be worked out of you because the works of faith are simply going to God or going to the one you believe in, meaning the Father, that you would have the solution given to you so you could apply it to your life so that you could take out the canker sore or the cancer that has come into your life because you opened the door to infection by your sin. Because you see, God protects you up until the moment you sin. Then when you sin, it's almost as though you opened up yourself to all the possibilities of infection, of disease, of corruption, and they come flooding in on you like a like a unprotected wound that's been sliced and it's open to the world and the wind and the rain and to all the things that could possibly cause it to deteriorate and maybe lose a limb or lose your life if it became bad enough. So God wants to apply his ointment to it. He wants to apply his forgiveness to it. He wants to apply his ability to heal it. And when you sin, you need to be healed because that infection that has gone on with the consequence of sin needs to be removed from you. So when you sin, God promised that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, that's wonderful. That's just a scripture. But the works of faith is taking that scripture and then doing it like God said to do. If we confess our sins to Him, it's not confess your sins to each other necessarily, but it's confessing your sins to the Father who has the healing solution for you, which is forgiveness. Because it says He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you want to have the forgiveness, you could say that it's been applied to you because of the works of God, but if you want to have the cancer removed because you did sin, if you want to have the conscience healed because you did sin, if you want to have all those things spiritually given the remedy, then you have to confess your sins because he will remove that as far as the east is from the west and he will separate you from those consequences of sin that you can't seem to get away from, that you feel like the enemy is coming in and constantly reminding you that you blew it. That is God's solution for you, and it cost Jesus' life to do it to you. And your vaccination, as it were, your remedy, your healing, your medicine, your prescription is simply that. Confess. He'll take care of the rest. In God Calling... Stray sheep. O oh, Jesus, guide our footsteps, lest we stray. For straying, my children, there is no cure except to keep so close to me that nothing, no interest, no temptation, no other, can come between us. For what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall height, nor depth, nor principalities, nor things above, or things below, be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nay, nothing, none of these. Sure of that, you can buy you can but stay safe at my side, for beside me you are protected, knowing that as I am the very way itself, nothing can prevent you from being in the way, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nothing can cause you to stray. I have promised peace, but not leisure. I have promised rest for your soul. I have brought you comfort, but not pleasure. I have said, in the world you shall have tribulation. So do not feel when adverse things happen to you, that you have failed or are not being guided. But I have said, remember, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So learn of me. Learn of my ability and my power, and the power of one who, though he was spat upon, though he was scourged, though he was misunderstood, though he was forsaken, though he was rejected, though he was crucified, 
could still yet see his work not affected by any of these things, but could cry triumphantly from the cross, it is finished. It has been accomplished. Not the pain, the mocking, the agony, but that which God sent me to do. I accomplished the work he gave for me. Your sins are forgiven you. Let this thought comfort you amid failure, amid discord, amid suffering. Even now, many friends and angels are prepared to sound the chorus with you to recognize what I have done for you and what I am doing in you. That I have finished the work and in you it is accomplished. It is finished because I have done it.